Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to the Undead Gaming Cast, the return of episode one. Welcome. Um, oh, this is the monthly pod. It's been so long since we've done this. I don't even know how I start this podcast anymore. Um, it's a, and because it is number one, the problem is like because no, we had a tradition for a while of you just fluffing the numbers. <laughs> Absolutely, so, like, you, can't, you can't even fluff the numbers because I know. you know it's episode one. Absolutely. So. Yes, so uh, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Undead Gaming Cast, the monthly podcast where we talk about video games, the industry and stuff and things. Joined with me is, uh, as you can see, Mr. Singularity Josh. Welcome buddy. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Been a while, hasn't it? It has been a reasonable amount of time since we've done this. Absolutely. So some of you may be wondering why we're episode one. If you're new, then th- that's no problem for you. You've caught, you've, you're already caught up. But um, if you're a, an old li- listener to the to the podcast, um, then this may be of some confusion to you. Well, since we started doing this about four years or so ago, we've been very on and off, very sporadic with the podcast. It's gone through numerous changes, numerous sort of media changes as well, and host changes as well. Um, last year, I think we finally got to the uh, the state of the podcast that we really wanted, where we had a live show and then it was out on YouTube and all the other medias of which you could listen to podcasts. Uh, but things happened and we, we've been sporadic since, but we wanted to, to, to bring back the podcast. So we decided, well, let's just start from the beginning. Episode one, numero uno, and uh, we'll go from there. And see see how how we fare, but we're we're back, uh, raring to go and uh, ready to do this a bit better than last time, I think. Don't hype us up too much, mate. You'll only disappoint them. <laughs> Thanks for the optimism. Appreciate that. No, but uh, yeah, but seriously. Um... <laughs> So yes, uh, like I said, this is my podcast where we talk about video games, stuff, industry, and stuff, things. So um, if you're new or whatever, then not much has changed for the old format. We sort of start the podcast by discussing what we've been up to this month, what we've been playing, and this, that, and the other. Then we move swiftly on to our news topic or news topics of the month. Uh, this month will be a little bit different, seeing as this is episode one, but we'll get to that in a bit. And then we round things off generally by just self-promoting the shit out of ourselves. I was about to say, just plugging the everlasting fuck out of ourselves. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, that's about it, really. So I suppose without further ado, Mr. Singularity Josh, what have you been up to this month in video say, games? You can go a little bit longer than just this month if you want. I was about to say, because like, if we're going to go back towards <laughs> last podcast, oh, like, not that far. <laughs> that's going to be, that's, I was about to say, that's probably going to be 45 of the 90. <laughs> and then and then in all fairness you also be quite short because it'll just be i played the witcher uh... <laughs> <laughs> how, how dare you how, how dare, dare you, you right? you're, you're, um, you're right yeah but like <laughs> um so like because we're we're at episode one mm. um anybody anybody that is old hat to to the old and dead gaming cast mm. uh will remember that i had a magic the gathering addiction um, and I've fallen back down that rabbit hole. Um, Quite severely. The... He's got a broken leg. Yeah. He can't get out. I know. Um, with the addition of Magic the Gathering Arena, which is brilliant because it is all of the cards from the current standard format, mm. um, like as you would play them on paper without the horrible interface of what was Magic Online, which looks like a Windows 95 program. <laughs> like, I'm not it did, no, it did look you. bad. It did look it bad. It looks awful. It looks awful. So I'm gassed about that. Um, I've, you know, they do like events where they do different formats and they mix things up. So you can say, oh, you can't play these cards because they're like everywhere at the moment or whatever. So um, I'm also I'm also back on the Destiny Hype train. <laughs> Pour one out for the homies. Uh, <laughs> with the... Uh, with the uh, release of Shadow Keep, I think it's called. I think you're right. I think it is Shadow Keep. Yeah. Um, and I'm just I'm back to I'm back to my Titan shenanigans. Um, and aside from that, to be completely honest, I haven't really played a lot this month. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there is anything else of interest. Mm. Not particularly on the not particularly on the video game side of things because I've been playing a lot of like actual tabletop so that's kind of it for so me we'll, really yeah, let's get into that so um 
Always, always welcome to talk about those. Yeah, so um, my friend Catherine, um, as well as like some some of the uh, the other gang that you were aware of, um, <clears throat> our, our friends Beth and Alex, hmm. and then my, my significant other Pippa, um, have been playing D and D Fifth Ed, um, and having a fucking blast with it. Um, I'm just causing Catherine, who is our dungeon master, so many headaches. <laughs> it is like. She was like, okay, I need a DC 10 for you, dexterity check for you to cross this river, you know, step in stones on a river. DC 10. Okay, fine. I get across fine. Everybody gets across fine apart from one person. They fall in the river. Okay, I'm going to help him, says somebody else. Helping him falls in the river. Then um, we hatch a plan where we get uh, Pippa's character, who's a dwarf called Salix, to cross back over the river with the with a side of um with a side of rope, and we're going to use a kind of like a fishing line so they can like grab onto the side of it. We can like tug them out that way. No, 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 no. The bard, who is is pretty much a rogue, to be completely honest with you, decides he is going to try to mission impossible across the rope into the middle of the river to reach down and grab hands. Guess who also falls in the river i mean of all the ways to do things <laughs> just just like the level of chuckle fuckery it's just like and um the character because i'm playing um i'm playing like a like a druid hmm. who's like a hermit and he's just got like he, he he's like these people are fucking idiots as it is like he, he's um circle of the shepherd druid so he's like a summoner so like hmm. he just like pulls like you know fight you know calls like animals out and stuff and he's got like con- he's got the, constantly the ability to like speak with animals like spending a spell slot and things like that it's very much like that um and i'm just like these people are fuck it. what why why did i leave why 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 you could have been why at home in your druid forest i could have just circles been in my, I, and your bears could have, been, could have been in my fucking i got I, oh, i've got a cat as well there you go but instead, even... instead, you decided to venture out into the world with these fucking idiots. In all fairness, though, like I'm, I'm super glad that we managed to persuade the cat to come along because I didn't bring the cat. But what happened was like we just took a liking to it, and then we were like, we should have it come along. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the dungeon master failed her, um, her like resistance. Just like, yeah, yeah, like charisma check or whatever. <laughs> and she was like, well, this cat that's got two HP is coming along for the ride, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And so the cat's must called, protect the cat. Cat's called Cloud, and Cloud rides around on my shoulder. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm just like the uh, if you've ever seen the Lion King, you know that scene where uh, Scar's just like I'm surrounded by idiots. <laughs> like, like that is that is a, no, honestly, that that moment there, that is Barry. That is my mm. that's my druid. That is who my druid is. Just like I'm surrounded by fucking idiots. I hate everyone. And I just want to go back into the woods and just no, no. So, but yeah. So we've been having a lot of fun uh, with Fifth Ed, awesome. um, and I'm trying and I'm trying to get some other things together. But that can come that can come towards the back end of the podcast. So no worries. Robert, what about you then? What have you done aside from uh, play The Witcher? Because everybody knows you've been doing that. Well, I, f- I did. I finished that earlier this year. Um, did you actually yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, I and then immediately after i was like i'm gonna play it again <laughs> New game plus let's yeah. go boys uh, but it's been it's been a while like uh so i suppose more 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 recently on the rpg front i've been i've been playing um mostly on stream fallout 4 um which i've i've got so many mixed mixed feelings about and I think I'm going to put it down for a bit, if not indefinitely. What was this? Sorry, which game? Fallout 4. Oh, right. Okay. I, mm, yeah, I just... I don't know. I haven't really got into a Fallout since Fallout 3. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just struggling with it, I think. I think it's also not helped that I'm playing it now as opposed to when it sort of launched and released but then it's all the stuff that's come after it and how poor the game is in comparison to a lot of games that came out rpgs that came out that same year like the witcher 3 and games yeah. afterwards like horizon and horizon numerous so numerous other rpgs that have come out since that are just like 
I don't know, Bethesda yeah, have really fallen. Never mind all the shit to do with their shitty practices and Fallout 76 I mean, to, and I, Fallout I'm First not, and stuff. Like, I won't lie to you. Like, I reckon that had we not been rebooting like like this month and, and we're doing something a little bit different, like I'd imagine that probably would have been our. Um, I know. I, I'm. I'm. That re- probably would have been our. I'm, I'm kind of. I'm kind of upset um, because, in all honesty, we we would have this this episode we would have been talking about fallout 76 and we would have been talking probably about blizzard as well it's been a yeah. month for news in all fairness though like depending on what happens over the next few weeks or whatever like yeah. you know if nothing as major happens hmm. then maybe we maybe we head back to that yeah and, maybe and... yeah depends on how um how drive and news month we've got yeah yeah, so I don't know, like Fallout 4 is kind of, um, for me, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not, I'm enjoying it, but I'm not enjoying it as much as I feel I should be or could have been. Um, I honestly just don't think it's as good a game as people make no, it to be. it's just not, it's just not. And, and, then, and then I'm having like a moral dilemma, like I said, with the things that Bethesda are doing. It's just, I think it's just boiling down to the fact that I just don't want to support Bethesda as a company anymore. I just, I just really don't. And also, I've got quite a lot of other games in my back catalogue that I really want to play. Like, for example, I've got Horizon Zero Dawn, the complete edition, sitting over there, which I think I'm gonna play next as like my my next like mainstream game. So much um, fun that game is. Yeah. So you know, I never got chance to play the Frozen Wastes though, which I'm bummed out about. Hmm. Well, I'll let but, you know um... how they are. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll like, uh, if I, if I end up with a PS4 again, mm. um, that, that will likely be the first, that'd probably be the first thing I do. I'm like, I'm going to buy this and don't like this. Cause I've got yeah. like, I've got, um, Horizon Zero Dawn as the digital copy anyway. So yeah. like, it, it's like not an issue to like re-download the game and then like yeah. pick up, um, Frozen Wilds. Well, I've got, I've got the complete edition. So if you do end up with that, I, I can always lend that to you, whatever. So, um, so yeah but yeah so I, I saw the complete edition in like tesco for like i think 15 pounds so i was like uh oh, yes yeah, please man. so games yeah. games unbelievably good absolutely i had a bit of spare money i thought i'll, I'll treat myself i'll treat myself treat myself treat myself so yeah so um anyway uh we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll discuss that when we when when i play it um but yeah so i've uh what else have been doing so was it the month before? Uh, Batman Arkham Knight was free on PSN, and that yeah. game is fantastic. Holy shit! As much as I adore Batman, and I do like really yeah. adore Batman, I've never actually got like I've I completed Arkham Asylum, mm. and it's one of my favourite games. And then for some reason, I just couldn't fall into City. And then because I couldn't fall into City, like because I'm one of these weird people that needs to play everything in order, like yeah. regardless of actual like timeline linear stuff. Yeah. Like I just, I just haven't. Turned, I've got all of them. I've got because um, I picked them up on Steam. They were like eighty five percent off or something. Yeah. So for like all of them, it was like twenty quid. All the Game of the Year editions were like twenty quid, and it's yeah. like five pounds or something. Mm. I was just like, well, that's that seems too good to to not. Yeah. How many is there? There's four. Oh, yeah. So There's so four. It, it was it was five because it was it gave me Arkham Asylum, and then both versions of City. Oh, okay. Or, origins and night. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think similar to you, like, Arkham Asylum, like, blew my mind. Um, such was a Such a phenomenal game. game. Um, uh, definitely one of the, I think, one of the best of last last generation, really. And Absolutely revolutionised, like, the combat system as well. Yeah. Like, really combat. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every game, every game after that. As, yeah, as, as the Arkham, as Arkham combat. combat. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but also, just as in terms of, like... Um, superhero games and and making you feel like you're the fucking you feel like you're fucking batman like the yeah. game's fantastic but i think that's yes, the atmosphere really well absolutely but almost similar to you when I, when I got around to playing city i didn't get on with it well but that was more due to outside circumstances that were going going on in my life at the time when i was playing it so i, I didn't enjoy it as much as i should have done yeah um, i mean so I, I, think, I do at some point want to go back and revisit City, I think, to like really give it a proper go. Um, I actually restarted Arkham Asylum not too long ago okay. with, with the purpose of playing through City so I could play yeah. 
Origins and Night. And I think I remembered what I didn't like about City while I was playing Arkham Asylum, which okay. was Arkham Asylum is like it's um very narratively story linear yes driven yeah where it's like because city's an open world game yeah. it, it just doesn't vibe the same and that was like the vibe that was like the feeling that you were stuck in arkham asylum yeah 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 that was really what like was it added it added to the experience is that claustrophobia and yeah, like, yeah you're right being trapped there added to that experience um which yeah, city just yeah doesn't have um it, it, don't get me wrong it's nice being in the open world and sort of running around you know a small a, a small area of gotham but you're right i think in comparison to, to to what you expect or what you got from the first game it's very vastly different mm-hmm. um and you've got to really rethink how you play it cuz the traversal is so different the um the verticality and everything is all it's everything everything's super different yeah, it's um, like amped up because obviously you've got buildings to, like whereas before yeah. like you've got like statues, you've got like buildings to play with. Yeah, yeah. which you've very rarely got in Asylum, like mm-hmm. aside from like little areas where you went outside or whatever. Yeah. So. But yeah, but in 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 uh, sort of follow on from that, uh, Arkham Knight is very very good. I, th- I think the the story's really really good. The sort of moral dilemmas that it's it's really putting Batman into. I won't spoil it. Um, but yeah, I, I just very, very good that I, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying Arkham Knight as a game more so than I am City. Um, just, I think in terms of story and everything else it's it's, it's really grabbing me and pulling me in a lot more than I think City did. Um, and the Batmobile is, is an interesting addition to the game. Um, took me a little while to get used to it, but you do get used to it. it uh, uh, when you first get it, it kind of feels like it's on fucking steroids. I mean, it should be because it's the Batmobile, but I felt really unsafe driving it, which shouldn't be the case. Do you know Not what I mean? Not as Batman. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, right, I, I kind of, I kind of felt like you know, um, the driving in La Noir. Oh god. Yeah, and you're like a police officer. <laughs> That you're like crashing into people, like, and you're more of a danger to the city than you are like a help. Like that's how I yeah, felt. Because you're fucking like it's uh, it's Rockstar Games, yeah. so it's Rockstar driving, yeah. but you have to drive politely. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's um, a problem. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. So it, it's yeah, but it took me it took me a while to get used to it, and I think now I've got used to it. It is better. Um, I'm enjoying it more driving the Batmobile. Um, which is good, which is good. Seeing as it was like a huge addition to the game and should be realistically quite exciting. First time you're in the Batmobile and it's the fucking Batmobile, you know? It's like one of those really iconic cars that's just yeah, awesome. Yeah, super iconic. Absolutely. So, but yeah, no, um, really, really enjoy it. I still yet to complete it, um, sort of finding the time to to play it and play it off stream and stuff. And that's, that's like my own little personal game that I go back to every now and then. And uh, But I'm I'm close, I'm close. But yeah, really enjoying that. Um, other than that, I've uh, I've been playing this past week or so, or the last two weeks, because uh, Halloween and spooky times. I was playing Amnesia, the collection, which I picked up on PSN years back when it was free, um, and really enjoying it. I was about to say, I'm pretty sure I've got that on my PSN account, so yeah. it has been a, it has it's been been a while. while. Yeah, yeah, but decided to play it, and um, that, that game is fantastic. That series is really good. I'm really close to finishing Machine for Pigs, um, but yeah amnesia amnesia collection is great like, really yeah great. i i think i i it was kind of the first of its kind wasn't it really? absolutely yeah it, it was, was one of those of like games that brought that survival and, horror back that and sort of like outlast where it was like there is nothing that you can do against <clears throat> the things that are after you do you yeah. know what i mean it was yeah. like but amnesia does it so much better than outlast outlast i got really bored with in the end to be honest, frustrating I actually haven't seen it happen in Amnesia, like even though I was mm. watching you and stuff. Um, like in the section that I was watching, you, like you were fumbling around a basement with some like dude hooked up on a machine who was like asking for like some sort of like medicine or whatever. Mm. And like, and, and during like all of that bit where you were trying to like work out where you were going and yeah, like I don't think you actually had like a an encounter with 
whatever it is that chases you around. Yeah, the, the encounters were rare, which I think added to the the danger appeal of them. So when it when it did happen, it was tense. And in fairness, because it happened so sporadically, you were always a bit cautious when you were traversing the maps and the areas because you were like, I don't know if someone's going to turn up or not. And more often than not, they didn't. But it, I think it amnesia does it really well that it, it was the it, idea that somebody was just going to come around the corner and fuck your day absolutely up. whereas outlast was the yeah, same rinse and repeat chased, Out, yeah. yeah which was bullshit in the end and i think Amne- uh, outlast would have been okay were it four to five hours shorter than it actually ended up being um because it got to a stage where i was just like i can't be fucked i'm not playing hide and seek anymore I'm, I'm just pissed off. So I was literally just running through areas because I was like, I'm just going to get from A to B, fuck everything else because this is really pissing me off. But Amnesia, I just didn't get that at all. I got a bit lost a few times with like the puzzle mechanics and stuff, but I think that's... But I think that's... Isn't that kind of the point? Absolutely. Almost? Absolutely. Yeah. So what what is the adversary in, in Amnesia? Is it like a like corporeal or is it like a, a person chasing you? So so one of, one of the reasons I really loved Amnesia is because it's very Lovecraftian. Right. It's so blatantly Lovecraft inspired, and that's, I was, get, I I was love... getting vibes yeah. from watching that. Heavy, heavy vibes. Um, we're we're very much talking a lot of inspiration from uh, Case of Charles Dexter Ward and sure. um, a few others that escape my escape my memory. Um, but yeah, very much Charles Dexter Ward vibes um, of sort of immortality and old old rich guy as prolonged his life and this that and the other um so what's kind of following you is it's not quite explained but basically they were doing experiments on local villagers and torturing them and killing them essentially so i i think that they are um the beasts as it were or what have become beasts of those innocent people absolutely yeah that are kind of like going rogue and following you um but at the same time because it deals with because you're the, the main character you play has got amnesia and you're uncovering what you've done and your part in all of this as you go uh it's it's possible to take that or those enemies or have the theory that those enemies are in his head and they're like you know figments of his imagination because of his torture and his his sanity and all of that sort of thing so yeah yeah i mean, I remember like seeing some of the, like, the notes as you were like running around reading them and it was kind mm. of all to do with like almost like the morality of like crimes and stuff where you were like well you know this guy was a rapist but did he deserve to be like set on fire then put back out then set back on fire mm. you're like eh actually yeah he was a rapist <laughs> and he kind of did deserve it absolutely but kind of also not like yeah yeah and just that's sort of, like but that also, kind of the, the the more you uncover, yeah, the more you uncover, deserve it. absolutely, and and the more you uncover, like it obviously starts out with them being like morally okay with it because we're doing it to criminals. This person like killed someone. This person raped someone. Blah blah blah. But it certainly gets to a stage where you're like uncovering more and more and more, and then you're sort of questioning: is that person actually a criminal, or have you now run out of criminals? So you're just now. Any old fucking person will do, regardless, because you the the ends the ends justify the means justify in the your means, head. Yeah. yeah, so really, really interesting game. Really makes you think, and certainly I, I I I can see why Amnesia has got all the praise it's got. I can see why it is so influential, um, and <laughs> yeah, basically, cool man. Like I. I... I'm strange, like, I, I have a weird relationship with horror, where it's like, yeah. I, I enjoy horror, but, like, only very, very specific things, um, and I have to really be in the mood for it. I think you'd so, really enjoy Amnesia, also just because yeah, of the Lovecraftian element. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I could, I could probably, like, even if I wasn't in the mood for it, I could probably suffer with it just simply for, because I, you know, I, I like my Lovecraft. Yeah. So, and, and- we shall see I've got them all, so I've got them all on Steam. So yeah, and that's that's kind of my one crit, my one big criticism about the collection on the PlayStation is that the, the game is much better suited, obviously, to PC where it originated. Um, oh, actually, no, I don't. I've got I've got the Dark Descent, but either way, sure. I mean, play it either way. Um, but yeah, it, it's the the mechanics 
are much better suited to point and click. Rather yeah, than, I, I um, did. I did notice some like you. It's having issues. <laughs> you know, you're know, aiming reticule. Or yeah, whatever. it's fucking tiny. Yeah. So I can I can see why that's definitely more suited to a mouse. Because I mean, yeah. I was watching. Because like it wasn't just you that was playing it as well. Um, my my friend Lumi was playing it as well, and I was watching. I was watching her, and she was having the same problems with you. And I was just like, this would be so much easier if you just like had a mouse because it's so like fiddly. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so yeah, but other than that, like yeah, really really fantastic game. I think of all the games of that genre that came out sort of at that time or after is 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 definitely the best um and definitely up there with i think layers of fear as well i think i thought layers of fear was really good layers of fear was really good yeah yeah. the only one i don't sort of rate as high is definitely outlast i think of that Um, yeah i don't think outlast really great premise but i needs needed needed work needed revision (laughs) should have been five hours shorter than it actually was but yeah. Like a fucking teacher grading game work. <laughs> uh, C C plus C plus. Critic, cr- critical writing class. Uh, like a, a good good plot idea. Piss poor execution. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and other than that, um, tabletop uh, for me as well. So we've we've been heavily playing the Witcher. Um, tabletop role playing game by Artel Saurian, the same people that made Cyberpunk. Okay, but that's pretty like so. Is there much crossover mechanically? It's exactly the same. All oh, right, okay. I've I've not played Cyberpunk, but I've looked into Cyberpunk because um, I would like to play it. Um, and yeah, it's basically mechanically the same, um, essentially. Uh, which isn't a problem because it, it works for it works for both. It's just the the setting is different. But yeah, um, we're, that's our like weekly game at the moment, which I'm DMing. Um, cool. Really, really enjoying it. Yeah. So what's what's your party actually consist of then? Are you because obviously it's I'd imagine that, like the appeal is like oh I want to be the Witcher, but then obviously like witches mm. are like like obscenely like powerful and quite quite rare yeah do you actually have like a witcher in your party or are you more you're more focused on like the political like intrigue of the land so i'm trying to do like a big sort of mix of both because we've got players that are kind of combat orientated and um, players that are more um discussion and chatty charisma sort of related really um but we've got we've got one witcher um played by amber my other half um and we have a priest a criminal and a sorceress so it's a bit of a mixed bag uh but yeah i think really enjoying it we, we started the campaign off using the source uh, adventure that's at the back of the book and sort of just went from there really um doing just traversing the land and um doing a thing but at the moment they're sort of main the main sort of storyline is they're following up a lead on a um monster uh which uh sort of like a a sort of spectral spirit type demon thing um sort of of my own creation and inspired by other bits and bobs um which they're kind of pursuing at the moment and finding out answers and you know in between that they're having their own adventures and episodes i suppose in between so you're saying about like following like um an adventure you know mm. like because i've never actually done like a stock adventure mm. and i always wonder like Neither have I, as, as, as you know like both of us have dm'd games like yep. both of us probably quite enjoy dming games yep, absolutely thought, just because of the kinds of people we are but um so what's that like when the players like go off script or is what, it just because on, on a on a adventure that's pre-written like on a linear adventure yeah because um, like they entirely will. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, not that bad, to be honest. Um, so yeah, the the Witcher was the first system that I've ever used a pre-made adventure because, like you said before, I've always just written my own damn thing. Um, after we did the pre pre written adventure, I've I've written my own continuation um, and stuff. Um, but so this was just like a introduction for everyone to get into the game, as it were. But yeah. Um, 
quite quite easy really and to be honest i think i think because of the way way they're written it's not that difficult to get back on track or get back on script because you've i think the pre-written adventures are done in such a way that they lay out what what's available in your sort of sandbox if that makes sense sure um they've, they've already sort of established what is or should be of interest to to the players quite well so i didn't really find them going off script that much in all honesty and having to sort of pull them back and make it seem really unnatural and all this sort of thing i think the way the way it's set up where it 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 drops things at relevant times and because it's pre-written it tells you what you should and shouldn't be dropping so there's there i think there's already enough intrigue to get them into that rabbit hole as it were yeah, so you've always like the beats fall in the right place where the players Absolutely. feel they're following the story naturally. Yeah, and and really the only sort of off script thing they might do doesn't really hurt the campaign at all. Uh, it might be just in terms of they deal with something that you or the book hasn't anticipated for you know for the players to have done, so you just improvise from there. What do you mean? Like, in like, what do you accidentally do something out of sequence or whatever? Like, or do you yeah, mean like? I, yeah, either, like... either out of sequence or they deal with a particular scenario in a way that um, hasn't been pre-written in that respect. Yeah. I can so imagine like, you're meant to. It's like you're meant to kill this guy, and then yeah. they were like, oh, "I don't want to kill him." Yeah, and then yeah. you're like, "Oh shit, what do I do with this person?" <laughs> but I, I, I very much imagine though, um, especially for The Witcher, uh, the way it's sort of written, it's very sort of are, you're new to tabletop friendly like very very welcoming to people who are new to dming and new to playing um whereas i'm playing with quite experienced role players so the likelihood of them going off script as it were is more more likely but then i think i'm experienced enough luckily to to be able to improvise from there so sure yeah so yeah okay cool yeah yeah Awesome. So, um, well, with that, I think I, I, I'm done. Uh, if, if you're, I was about to say, is there anything else that we wanted to talk about, or are we are we done here? Do we want to sh- uh, shimmy on to the next? I think we should uh, shimmy on shimmy on to the next, Josh. Uh, so we yes, so it's uh, it's at this stage of the podcast that we move on uh, swiftly to our news topic or news topics of the show. Uh, like we said at the beginning, we're doing a little bit different this month because we are. This is episode one. So instead of a news topic like we would have no doubt have been discussing Bethesda and Blizzard this month, um, because god damn they can't control themselves, um, we are going a little bit against the grain because it's the first episode and we're kind of introducing ourselves again. So we thought let's do a sort of get to know us better topic. And uh, really we're sort of going to discuss how we've, I suppose, got it become gamers really and why why we're uh, valid to talk about the video games and stuff and uh, prove ourselves to you <laughs> our adoring fans our adoring fans yes um, and prove ourselves to you so um yeah uh we've we've kind of uh, condensed it down to sort of three main questions really um to discuss and and talk about really so yeah <laughs> any thoughts josh i mean i I'm, I'm, i was just waiting for you to finish the spiel <laughs> i realized that i was just like giving like i'm also aware that my camera isn't like centered on me properly like it's off at an angle so like to the viewers i'm just giving like a thousand yard stare like absolutely the... <laughs> but like i'm i'm actually just if i, if I do that adoring fan <laughs> um that might yeah. be a bit better so it looks a little bit more natural yeah. when i'm staring it, at lo- the it looks it looks a little bit more like you're engaged with the conversation so um, I'm, just like, I'm just like a thousand yards there <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like i said we've, we've we've condensed it down to like three sort of uh main main questions really or topics of conversation um to introduce our credentials as it were of games so um josh riddle me this um what is your first or or first couple we could expand it a little bit first sort of couple of gaming memories that you remember um as a as a young youth okay uh hi my name's josh and i'm an alcohol no wait <laughs> wrong podcast <laughs> wrong podcast wrong podcast wrong podcast no um so 
the one and it, it, it's actually one of my earliest memories okay um so like when i was really little fucking nerd yeah like really really <laughs> little like i assume that my uncle's kind of always been into games and that kind mm. of thing as well so like my, my uncle used to live in the same street as my grandparents um mm when we were much younger so i must have been round my nans or whatever and then they took me over to see my uncle and my uncle um had a ps1 um and like l- let me let me play he sat me down he goes oh you know trust sort of try this or whatever i don't really quite know how i ended up with the controller in my hand but one way or the other like this was before dual shock as well they were like yeah. a, just a d-pad yeah 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 um and it was a it was Tomb Raider of some description, oh, and I don't know which Tomb Raider it was. Um, I just know that it was on the PlayStation, and mm. I was in like a cave, and it was like black in front of me, like I couldn't see anything. And I think I think the reason he was like uh, like trying to show me this was because I was really into dinosaurs at the time. Yeah. So like I walked a little Them bit. Them raptors, yo, or that T Rex. <laughs> Fuck all that noise. No, there was like a there was like a Triceratops or something. Okay. There to start. And I was kind of like, I was like, oh, this is really cool, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, oh, wow. Like, you know, doe-eyed or whatever. And then I stepped a little bit forward forwards, and then a T-Rex ate me. And then, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, like absolutely, like, obviously, four-year-old, not really know what's going on. First time I've ever touched anything. And then a T-Rex comes out of the dark and eats you. <laughs> like, I think I might have cried. <laughs> I can't say, like, to be honest, like, all, my memory, I think the memory is mostly just of the fear of the T-Rex just eating me. I and can neither confirm like, oh, nor deny if I cried. I, well, I don't fucking know. I probably did, to be honest. It, like, because all I remember is just, it, it's the fear of yeah. it eating me. So I yeah. must have, must have traumatized me in a way that, like, I still remember it. I'd almost imagine it was probably the first one. Probably was to yeah. be honest. I don't really know. Yeah. Like I say, like it was so 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 vivid so, as it were. It probably would have been. I would hazard it probably been ninety six. I can't have been much older than four, maybe yeah. five. So and that kind of makes sense with the yeah. timeline. Yeah. So. Um. So that was that was my first. That was my first game in memory. Um. And I don't really know, like, what my, I don't really have, like, another memory that's, like, as strong as mm. that, particularly. Like, not not at least for a real, really long while. I'd always kind of been involved in video games and stuff, like, you know, I've had PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, whatever. But, like, I think my next, like, really, really super-duper vivid memory was um, when, I was, when I was 16, um, like my parents like had got divorced like that year and like we'd basically just all had a shit year as a family and i think like mom knew that it had bothered me and so like bless her fucking heart she scraped together like bear in mind my, my birthday is a week after christmas mm. she scraped like so she scraped together like all the money that she could and she bought me um an xbox 360 for my birthday nice and like i was fucking just like just out of my mind like yeah like so so grateful yeah um like okay, can you pass this? cool that's that's my other half um, <laughs> sorry i just have to throw that back at her um uh yeah and and so like i went to like i you know i had, had my money and stuff uh and i went into game station at the time um and oh, they've not been around for years oh my it's a game word. station that was yeah. my 16th birthday um and i tried to buy a copy of fable 2 oh, now God. this this wasn't too long like too long before this they they'd only just started putting actual um actual ratings on games not like peggy ratings but like actual rating mm. ratings so so like the guy like asked me for id and i'm like well, I'm 16, so no, I don't actually have like ID. So I had to like call my dad, mm. and then my dad like had to come into town, and he bollocked the shopkeeper, <laughs> which was quite funny. Um, and then like I remember like, going home, like, racing home, and like slamming Fable Two in the um, like in the disc tray, and just like being just like absolutely like at all with it. Mm. 
um and then like when you know you do your character creation character select and then like the like depending on what gender you're playing or whatever like they kill your sibling and that's kind of the the catalyst for like the story yeah and i just like remember just being like they killed my sister or whatever and i was just like <gasps> like mind blown <laughs> so i think that's that's my other like really really strong like gaming mm. memory but like there's like 12 years between them yeah and i did i did do stuff between like i remember playing like red faction 2 mm-hmm. with my um with my sister like at like my nan's house on like a tiny little box tv in the dining room um like playing like the multiplayer of that like split screen looking like cheating like looking at like where she was and like that sort of thing so but yeah i think that's that's kind of like my those are my like first gaming memories cool i think so do we want to do we want to run through sequentially or do we want to um go back and forth on these we'll go back and forth we'll go back and forth cool so um so robert what are your first gaming memories so my first game memory is uh i think similar to yours quite vivid and probably the same age bracket as well um so i must have been about what, between four and six so very quite similar um and i came home this is when my family were quite close as well like so all my cousins and stuff were all like local and around and we had quite a, a strong family unit as it were um and i came home one day and they were there no idea why or what was happening you know but i come home and i see them in the living room and they've got um a snes super nintendo plug nice. uh, hooked up to the tv and th- this is during the time as well and it wasn't that i know it wasn't theirs um th- this is at the time where you could um hire or rent consoles from oh blockbuster holy shit blockbuster. dude yeah like i mean these two statements already uh me talking about blockbuster you talking about game stage you're already showing our age here um, but that being said, I think I think Blockbuster really shows the yeah. idea. <laughs> Holy crap! Renting a console from a Blockbuster, yes. So they were they rented a Super Nintendo, and on the screen was Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers, and it, it must have. I don't, I don't know what Super Mario Brothers, but it must have been two or three. Probably so what, would have been two. That's yeah, been whatever ways, whatever yeah. one had been out on the Super Nintendo. Um, so yeah, and I just remember I don't I don't remember specifically um, playing it or given given the controller, but I remember the controller. So I, I, I and I you know the, the Super Nintendo controller is quite iconic. That's how I know it was a Super Nintendo. And obviously Mario, how can you miss the re- rectangle with the D pad? Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. yeah so they so, yeah, so they were playing Super Super Mario Brothers. Um, so that's like a real weird, vivid sort of memory. I think my next one after that is probably. Um, <laughs> sorry just it's re- hard, isn't it? reading it's the hard, it is it? it is hard no, sorry I, was just, I just got distracted by the chat um did they actually rent it or was it rent from blockbuster wherever they never returned it and just never give it back to be fair i, I did hear a few people do that whereas like mm. they'd have blockbuster membership or whatever um and they'd be like moving house yeah and then they just N- yeah they'd, they'd just get a blockbuster rent a few things and then just leave the area. <laughs> I tell you, what, I tell you what my cousin did do very briefly. Um, he did do a similar thing to that, uh, which I don't know if he ever got found out for. <laughs> but they rent. What I can't, even, I can't even remember what game it was they rented. Um, it might might even be, have been GTA, but they rented GTA. And when it came time to give GTA back, he put Frogger in the disc case <laughs> and gave that back instead. So I have no. no idea if we got away with it. Probably not, but um, but I do remember that happening and me being like a goody two shoes. I was like, oh, I can't do that. They'll find out. They'll know. And then my cousin was like, you can't tell anyone. I was like, oh my god, if I get found out, I'll go to jail. Well, but is the police not my door? I know it's terrible. So anyway, yeah, but um, crack like an egg. <laughs> uh, so my next like big memory um was it must have been um, it was playing Pokemon Blue. Original Pokemon Blue on the original Game Boy. So oh, again, yeah, must have been between six and eight years old, maybe. If not a little bit old. I don't know. Um, I'm grasping at straws here for timelines. But um, yeah, so... I'm exactly the same. But like, that's really funny. Because like, you've just kind of like, as you've said... Jogged like, a memory. 
unlocked a, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah i remember I, I got it for christmas day yeah and i uh, we had both but I, I i thought they were both mine i think i had pokemon red but mm. i definitely remember also having pokemon blue so i don't know whether they were both mine or if like my Your sister had bought, one like, and you had one yeah, yeah. i'm not sure because the game boy was mine i was the mm. only one with the game boy sure so i'm not sure fair so yeah so the um so my my weird my weird pokemon blue memory is that i went shopping with my mum as you always did as a child and she went to like one of these big sort of industrial complexes like where they've got like a b and q and a home base and a with the massive like car park. yeah 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 with the massive car parks and stuff and for whatever reason i was like not in the mood mum i'm gonna stay here that's how, that's clearly how I spoke to her, um, and she was just like, "Sure." She was only going in for like five, ten minutes, like in and out, real quick. So she left me to it, cracked the window open just a little bit, like a yeah, dog, I mean, yeah. so I could still breathe. Kids don't die in hot cars, guys. <laughs> so yeah, and um, I was, and, and and the the memory specifically to Pokemon Blue is that it was the day that day that specific day when my mum went to like B and Q or wherever. My Ivysaur evolved into a Venusaur. Oh, hell fucking yeah. And I was so fucking hyped and happy because I was just like doing my thing. And obviously, like the 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 ev- evolution timeline between like Bulbasaur and Ivysaur, not that big, but the Ivysaur to Venusaur, quite a bit bigger. So it's like, I think, I think you'll find it's something along the lines of 14 to 30. Four. Yeah, something like that sounds about right. That sounds absolutely about right. Yeah. So yeah, so it, it evolved. I was like, oh, fucking hyped as shit. And then my mum, not long after, comes back to the car, and I'm like, I, she's got her thing. She's back in the car. I'm like, mum, my Ivysaur evolved into a Venusaur, and I could not tell you how much she did not give a shit. Uh, she was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> I was like, but this is like the most amazing thing that's happened to me you don't care god bless god fucking bless you your mum <laughs> oh, i fucking love your mum <laughs> so yeah there you go so that's um that's a that's a nice nice little little memory of, of pokemon blue there for you uh and i always remember every time we ever I, I don't i can't remember where that fucking retail park is anymore or if it still exists but i do remember that every time we went back there i would have that like flashback memory it'd like trigger yeah. that memory back again which was always nice See, like something that I didn't like, I didn't work out until like much, much later, and mm. and I don't even know whether it actually like occurred has ever really like properly occurred to you because yeah. it's like because it's just like such a such a weird choice because the mm. way they lay it out on the table. So like the Pokeballs, it was um it was Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charizard, yeah, Charmander. So. Charmander, sorry, yeah. Char- could you imagine? <laughs> just oh, walking... fu- the fucking hate we're gonna get now. Thanks, Josh. Could you imagine you just walk like, just like, I, ah, I'm the new Pokemon master. Look at my fucking gigantic dragon, <laughs> <laughs> Charizard. Uh, fuck walking through this forest. I'm just gonna <laughs> fly over it. Um, but it was actually the difficulties. Yeah, I didn't realize that like, until I was at least in my twenties. I didn't. I didn't. Realize and I'm pretty sure it was like a like, meme that told me because, like, because, like. Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur like evolves the fastest mm. and then is um is basically perfect for the first three gyms because uh rock is weak against grass, water's weak against yeah. grass, and um electric, electric. isn't effective against yeah. grass. grass. Yeah. So and then it's like not really until you get to like gym seven or whatever that mm. it actually really matters which is like the fire gym yeah and you're like oh, oh shit <laughs> i need other things and then, in and my then, party that, by that time you can probably like because it's on the same cinder cinder or whatever yeah you just go to the right of cinder Isles. that's where articuno was so if you really really wanted to fuck somebody's day you could be like eh, well i'm just gonna just uh and legendary iceberg <laughs> and yeah and then just do it like that mm. So, but I, I didn't realize until like much, much later. Yeah, I, I don't think I, I realized or, or not realized uh, or was like, it was pointed out to me, I should probably say, until I was in my 20s. Yeah, and like, it was definitely Bulbasaur like gets, a meme. Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur gets the, 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 the first three. Charm, uh, Squirtle gets the first two. two. Yeah. And Charmander, Charmander doesn't get good until the fourth gym. Yeah. And evolves the slowest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Um, so, um, 
I suppose with that, we'll move on to question uh, numero dos. And numero dos? Yeah. So what um, what was it that... What, what was like the, the chain of events or the game or the the thing that happened to you in your sort of gaming life that made you think no i'm 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 a gamer like th- this is this is my thing now um where you were like i'm gonna you know this is my hobby i think actually if i've like, explained that at all well yeah yeah no because like you know what you say you, you always kind of like dabble you always dabble with yeah. games as you as you know like you go around your mates and you play fifa or you know you had like a playstation or like game boy or whatever like you'd always dabble into it but i think the yeah. first time that i like really seriously was like oh shit motherfuckers is on yeah was um so like after I, obviously like i got my xbox i played through like fable about 900 times um oh, and then like um i got like a, like friends with a guy at school um mm. and he was like super into gears of war so mm. we played um we played a lot of like gears one and it was just as gears two was like coming out okay um so like we played lots of gears one like gears two um and then i had a friend of mine and this was like this was kind of like getting on so i must have been like 15 or 16 at this time where it was like um like obviously like i was saying i was like playing stuff playing stuff before then but like really hardcore it was like we got into we got really into halo 3 and like we were like over like study leave and like summer holidays and stuff we were playing like like tw- like 12 hours a day of it or something <laughs> like i I'm, I'm not even exaggerating um, i miss i fucking miss 12. those days dude could you, I ima- miss could you those... imagine playing halo 3 for 12 hours on this like not not have any of the dlc either yeah. so it was like so it was like this the fucking eight stock maps or whatever the fuck it was yeah um just like playing playing that all day every day 12 hours for six weeks but don't you just miss those days where that was just your life like oh man to go back to go back (laughs) specifically for that not the rest of the bullshit that came with it just that (laughs) yeah i mean like how nice would it just fucking be though to like have the same like time frame that you had then mm. though like you don't realize until you're a fucking adult like how much time you actually had to do stuff oh as my a kid. god yeah dude and like obviously like as a kid like you're you're limited by what you can do in terms of like the fact that you're as old as you are or that you've got the funds to do it or whatever but like like i only work till 12 on a friday mm. and it's so fucking nice that i get home and i'm home by like even if i work some even if i have to work out of another office like i've been for the last couple of weeks like getting home at like just after one yeah and fucking just like sitting down and just like you know i played some destiny when i got home yeah and... just having more than just like a, a small chunk of your evening you've got yeah and not and, and like not immediately having to like come home and sort the dog or sort mm. the tea or do you know what i mean like yeah. like just or just like those little bits of like life admin or like do you know what i mean yeah so it's it's kind of nice to just like I'm like oh man we fucking we fucking wasted it when we finished school at like half past three like we didn't know how good we had it like no sir no we waking did up not every, waking up every day at, to be there to be at school for nine o'clock then like dang I've got to be here till half past three today like I'm staring at the fucking clock at work like <laughs> when will you end I'm like what the fuck. It's hot. It's half past three. I swear to God, it's ten p.m. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So, so Halo Three then was your sort of pinnacle. Yeah, I moment. think I think like Halo Three, Gears of War Two. Yeah. Those were definitely like my, like, my like yeah, like this is the thing we're doing. Yeah. Kind of, kind of things, and, and then since then it's sort of like it carried on and. Mm. It, you know, like other games kind of got introduced and then like, you know, went to uni and then like, you know, you know, like we met at uni, which is yeah. obviously like, well, we're friends and like yeah. we, you know, we played video games all the time together and do you know what I mean? And it's yeah. just kind of, it's kind of been, a, I'd say it's probably been a constant of my life over the last like 10 years yeah. Like yeah. where I'm like, where I'm like actually actively caring about things in the industry and caring mm. about the games that are coming out and what i'm playing and stuff so yeah but i think yeah that, that real awakening kind of happened sort of like halo gears 2 
Um, yeah, I think I think that was kind of yeah, like Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two. That was another one, mm-hmm. like that 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 kind of era. I think. Yeah. Cool. So what what about you then? Like, so I, I... I'm not too dissimilar in all honesty, but I think I. I got involved a little bit earlier than you did just by the games that you were talking about. Um, so, so I think like similar, to, similar to yourself, I've, I've always had like a game boy when I was growing up and, you know, a lot of Pokemon and stuff. And I had a PlayStation one, but I didn't have any of like the, the sort of big classic PlayStation one titles that a lot of people uh, I'm thinking of Naz for some reason that you know those sort of ps1 classics that i suppose a lot of people who grew up with gaming grew up with like metal gear and final fantasy 7 and crash bandicoot and yeah, i didn't like, have or play like those games Naz's, that's literally just fucking naz's aesthetic though like <laughs> yeah, yeah. i don't know like whenever i just think of naz like if, <laughs> if, if you say to the words like naz and mm. games in the same sentence yeah. even though i know he plays absolutely everything yeah and he's always got he's like he's always got his ear to the ground about stuff if you're like what is Naz playing? The answer is probably a strange indie game on his Switch and replaying a Final Fantasy game. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But he's like, but he's replaying it on the PS One. It was he's not it playing was... like the remaster. It's on the PlayStation One. Absolutely, it was his Let's Play of uh, Final Fantasy Seven that I discovered him on when I, and that's when we sort of connected. Really. Anyway, yeah. So uh, hopefully we'll get Naz on the podcast uh, soon as well. Um, but yeah, so so I didn't I didn't really grow up with those like classic games. I had um, I had I had the original Tomb Raider, but I didn't really get it or understand it at the time, so I didn't play it much. I had Spyro: Year of the Dragon. I suppose oh, you put yeah. the Die Hard trilogy in that because that was a pretty fucking dope game. Um, I literally don't even remember. That. Oh man, it was good. It was good. It was good. I, don't ever think I, I never played. I don't think I ever played Die Hard, and I never played yeah. Golden Eye either. Yeah, no, I never played Goldeneye. Um, yeah, and uh, and also, biggest game for, for the, from that period for me, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. <sighs> Big up yourself. Oh yeah, what a game! Like fucking Hagrid looks like he's been like, melted. It's a, a candle that somebody's <laughs> just like <laughs> left next to the radiator. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, I was uh, that I was uh, before I left YouTube, or like a couple of years before I left YouTube, I was thinking of doing a Let's Play of that, which I, I wish I did. I wish I'd done. That was a good game. Anyway, yeah. So, and then after that, I had, um, I had, um, I didn't really upgrade my uh, Game Boy until Game Boy Advance because um, I had the original grey brick thing from the like brick. 89 or whenever it was made. Um, so way before my time. Nice. Um, and yeah, and then PlayStation 2 as well. And again, didn't really have much in the way of your classic PS2 games. I sort of mostly had movie tie-in games and stuff like that. Um, and a fuck ton of Harry Potter games. My God, I was obsessed. And the Lord of the Rings games as well. Um, big up for Return of the King. Um, That's such a good game. Holy hell. That was a dope game, yeah. Um, so it wasn't really until, I think, late primary school. So what, for our American viewers or listeners that would be like late elementary yeah, school, school. Yeah. yeah so well, it wasn't middle, it, possibly middle school to be fair yeah yeah so it wasn't really until then that i started to get a little or started to take a little bit more notice of games but not too horrendously because uh, it was more of like a peer thing i think where most of your friends were into gaming or football and i wasn't into football so you know by default <laughs> by default yeah i mean as a kid i was far more interested in playing with my figures and my toys and dressing up like a fucking nerd explains a lot about me I was about to say my that, career that, path I was and about to say, that, i was about to say that trend has not continued no no wait no, yeah wait. De- it's never ended yeah um so yeah so it was yeah and it wasn't really until the 360 came out so oh, i must have been what 12 13 13, 14 yeah, ish. Seems right? about right. Yeah, it was it 2006, wasn't it? I think that came out. 2000, so, 2006. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't really until then that I started to really, really take notice of video games and think, this is fucking awesome. And it was simply uh, similar to you. A, f- a friend of mine at school had an Xbox 360, quite close to its release as well. So I, I hadn't upgraded or anything since then. And um, he, he had a 360 and he had the original Gears of War. 
which we went over and that blew my mind. Gears War blew my mind and uh, we were playing that quite a lot together and I was loving it. And I was over there's one day and like on their shelf, I, I, know, I was like looking through the 360 games and they, they didn't have many because obviously it had more or less just come out. It must have been about eight months or old, if not a year old by that point. And um, I saw this cover which just took my interest and it was like a parchment like cover and it had on it in big old letters oblivion oh dear and i was like what the fuck is this game like and me being like big into lord of the rings and games like and or, or, or franchises like that i was like the fuck is this this looks interesting picked it up and saw like the parchment artwork and just oblivion the elder scrolls oblivion on it and then turned it over and there's like a dude in armor and like fire and like the oblivion gate and all this sort of thing all things i didn't understand but thought was so cool and this is like lord of the rings i was like what is this game why have we not been playing this and he was like, oh it's a single player game and it, i don't know you uh, and i was like can i play it and he was like sure and let me play it so i, I literally dove into the the dungeon level the introduction dungeon level of oblivion the and prison. yeah the prison yeah and played that through and really for the first time uh being introduced to rpg mechanics and and recognizing that they were rpg mechanics um and you know sort of creating my character and going through this this dungeon and this prison and patrick stewart and all of this that and the other and then finally to like get to the end of it thinking you know because up to that point it was pretty bog standard linear sort of game your usual i suppose at that point what i'd come to expect from video games with my track record of what i played and what i'd not played and then getting to the end and opening out the sewers and then being in tamriel i was about to say yeah oh no right yeah no i understand what you mean now. yeah but you this all, this all happened in a second. Because I thought, the way that you were saying it, I thought that you'd fucking gone out the sewers and I'd just, like, followed the linear quest, like, in a... Do you know what I mean? Just no, going quest yeah. to quest to quest and not bothered interacting with the open world. And then the yeah, I thought no. you were like, I got to the end of the game and I was just like, <laughs> you played it's a linear the piece of shit. <laughs> didn't fucking realise that it was an open world game. <laughs> no, 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 no. So as soon as I got out the sewers and obviously this world opens up to you and I was like oh my fucking god and then looking at the map and everything else i was like holy sh and th it blew my mind and this game at the time was like nothing i did like nothing i'd ever seen before was so damn pretty and i was like this is like fucking middle earth like this is amazing I was the like, first I'm... time that you fucking open the map and just hold left trigger as the map zooms out and you yeah, go yeah yeah oh my god absolutely <laughs> And then I think after that, I'd, I'd sort of like gotten into like RuneScape. And then after that, World of Warcraft came Fuck along. Yeah, and, RuneScape. Yeah. And then, then obviously, I'd, I'd, I think later, or not long after, either for Christmas or my birthday, I'd got a 360. And obviously, the first fucking games I wanted to get was Gears of War and Oblivion. And uh, that was it, really. And then after that came Fable 2. And totally and utterly obsessed with that and Oblivion. Um, and yeah, and it was it was really my first, not only my first um, time really recognizing that gaming is awesome and this is what I want to do, or that this is my hobby. Um, also realizing that I fucking love RPGs and RPGs are my jam and this is my genre. Yeah, you've always yeah, like I think, like we've got a very like a reasonably similar taste in games, yeah. but like I think like you've always been way more like traditional rpg focus whereas i've mm. always been way more like sci-fi rpg focused yeah absolutely because i mean we, we've discussed before you fucking love i mean your favorite rpg is mass effect 2 unless it's changed since then no, mass I, effect I did get mass effect but i just couldn't get into it in the same way that i it not because it was a bad game but it, i think it was just the sci-fi that I just, first one is clunky as fuck in all fairness yeah but i mean that at the time that was that was the only one um this was I you know I, I played it not long after it came out, um, but yeah. So I, I just I couldn't I couldn't it didn't grip me in the same way that Oblivion and Fable and your fantasy RPGs did. So yeah, but yeah. So that was that was that was it for me. And then after that, everything's come after, really. 
Yeah, it's, it's it's reasonably well documented, isn't it? After that, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, um, so yeah, Oblivion, uh, made by Bethesda, who I don't want to support anymore. Sad, Sad times. times. Sad times. Anyway, yes. So um, that was it. Yeah. So I think the last sort of question that we sort of want to almost round off on, um, again, more positives. Because it's it's uh, that kind of podcast before we del- delve into the future months of future news, which will no doubt make us want to cry and question well, why it, we even like video games. I was about games. to say, if it's news, it's probably sad. Absolutely. Um, sorry, Dog was uh, doing something he shouldn't have been there. Um, That's fine. So, yeah, we, actually, so, we actually never introduced the dogs. We didn't, no. Actually, no, we didn't, no. So, so uh, well, I... I let you go ahead, Josh. So, so below below my picture, mm-hmm. um, that's that's my German Shepherd. That's Lucy, and she's sat on the sofa right now having a cuddle with her mum, and she's adorable. So yeah, so but like Rob like texted me the other day and he was like, "Can you find me a picture of Lucy, <laughs> but like landscape?" And all of the pictures I have of Lucy are the portrait. Like I don't have any landscape photos really. Um, and well, the only one I have is that picture there, and she looks so guilty. <laughs> I don't know what she's done or why she's done it, but she's like she looking at something. it like she's like, "Dad, please, please no." <laughs> yeah, and uh, below me is my dog Joe. Joe, 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 dope as shit. Yeah. So we got two do- two awesome dogs um, in replacement of uh, what will be future guests on the podcast but anyway um so yeah so our final sort of question uh to round off this topic of what what is why are we gamers is uh some of just i suppose to to list off some of our favorite gaming memories really um so not all like our early ones but just some of our like all-time favorite things basically <laughs> yeah so um i think like I said, we, we can go back and forth. And I, I, I'd, yeah. I'd imagine that a lot of them actually will be shared as well. Yes, yeah. We've had, like, we've had some really, really good, uh, like, moments. Like together. Either, either, either playing together yeah. or um, cooperatively on projects. Yeah, um, agreed. And um, I think one of my favourites is, like, we... Uh, it's, like, Rob had bought me, like, a capture card for, um, for like, Christmas or birthday, birthday or something. Yeah. Like, and um like like robert come to like live with me for a bit and uh we sat down and we were like do you want to just should we record something should we play this and we we played monaco (laughs) and like it was and it was absolutely just a fucking shit show look all i'm saying is if you can find these videos on singularity josh's old youtube channel go watch them Cause like, I what, apologize like, for nothing. Uh, Cause like we, that was that was the day <laughs> that I learned that Rob is fucking dreadful at stealth games. <laughs> but I love them. I love them. I know, I know. Which is the pain of it all. And it was my, it, it was it's just my favorite thing where you just like yeah like James Bond James Bond James Bond open door oh that's a guard Josh oh, <laughs> run run away <laughs> run run we fucked it we fucked it run away <laughs> like and just like that entire just like and we we did actually play a couple of other stealth games after that as well not just Monaco but the trend continued <laughs> we I remember we played a we played a shooter of some description together that was like that had like it was either like a stealth mission or or something and I don't, and it was, exa- I, and it was I remember, exactly the same thing. I remember we played Gears of War Judgment for a little bit, but I don't... More, it was actually, yeah, it was, was Judgment. It judgment? Think, hmm. But yeah, but I think there was like a there was like a stealth section or a, like, a section where we could have... Where, where we could take it slow and take it a bit quieter. Yeah. And like, you were just like, right, are we ready? We're going to like sync. There was like the idea was we were going to like get up together and like sync up our shots on like the targets because we both had snipers or something. And we were just gonna like basically just like kill two guys and make the fight a bit easier, and then and then I don't know how, but you just you like click the wrong button and like threw a grenade over the top with the grenade like <laughs> sounds like me. It, it was just like it was absolute fucking peak Team America. Like, <laughs> damn, damn, I, I missed, missed him. 
like <laughs> so that, that's like that's one of that's one of mine like just any any time i play stealth games with a rob <laughs> We, there needs to be more like cooperative stealth games. I feel that's the to. thing. But the thing is, like, like I said, there's I, that, um, there's that a way out. That one that's like a like split screeny, um, okay. like prison breaky sort of thing. Oh. Like, like maybe if we can arrange a visit or something, yeah. maybe we can have a go at that. Sounds good. But... Yeah, see, so that's it. So I, I fucking love stealth games. Uh, I really do. But I, I think, um, I, I, and I usually, I, I. I I don't think I can stream them because I take so long doing them and I really take my time and I really try and like shad like stealth shadow them don't get caught and all this sort of thing like so like Hitman and Pacific Dishonored Spurs. yeah absolutely um well, aside, aside from Hitman you can't really pacifist well you can to a degree you but can anyway. pacifist when a Hitman just um yeah but you know what I mean um so yeah the uh so uh, yes uh Hitman Blood Money um awesome game but yeah so i i i I enjoy those and i don't usually do too badly at them because i can take my time with them but i think when we've played them especially monaco monaco is very high paced you can't really it's frenetic yeah yeah which which is definitely part of the the fun of the game but yeah no I, i i definitely remember almost making you I don't know whether cry or want to strangle me or probably both in a sort honest, of... I think I think you were just mostly just giving me a brain aneurysm. <laughs> yeah, there was that moment where blood started pouring from his ears and ears nose, and nose yeah. and eyes <laughs> <laughs> and mouth. Yeah. So um so one of, one of my all time fave game memories and there's been there's been a few I think of them um and again involving yourself josh and a few others um there was one that involved our good friend uh minty and yeah. uh humble gamer as well Did humble, yeah. yeah um but for, for the most part it's always, it's always been with you anyway but we mm-hmm. have done a few uh charity live streams us tiny tiny small little youtube slash twitch people that we were at the time still are um doing 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 our doing our bit for for who whatever cause it was it was uh child's play and uh, uh I think the one, that one was, uh, as well yeah, it's medicine dance our frontier yeah so we've done a few really really awesome charity streams over the like over the course of a couple of years or whatever um where we've we've managed to earn a decent amount of money for for some of these it's, charities um it's I think I think if you counted up all the all the times that we've like so if you remember we did uh, the the zombiethon at Thright Night yeah 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 yeah. Did, that was a uni, yeah yeah we did um, we've done we've done two or three for Child's Play yes yes we have and we did the the big one for Doctors Without Borders well, I think we must have raised about two at least two and a half grand at least. I, yeah, I'd, I'd hazard a guess that you're probably right. Actually, I, I, it's probably I, about two and a half. Yeah, round. I, I do. I do recall that we uh, we uh, earned, uh, made at least eight thousand. Eight, sorry, eight hundred pounds. I think it was yeah. for, for Doctors Without Borders. Yeah, that was um, really good. That was. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Some some of those were were, were just fantastic, and uh, especially the ones where I think that the most recent one that we did for Child's Play, uh, which we should definitely get together and do again. Where yeah. we did, I think was it was it a twelve hour stream? I think we did. Yeah, we did the, the um, twelve hour stream. We like sat together and we played a bunch of co op games, didn't we? And we had we had one we had one comfy chair and a kitchen chair. <laughs> yeah, and just like at <laughs> intervals would just like rotate. Yeah, because yeah pain <laughs> absolutely yeah we we did a we did layers of fear we did diablo layers 3 layers of fear diablo I think, yeah. 3 i think we did divinity original sin as well a little bit divinity of divinity original yeah. sin i think we yeah. did four uh, and oh over, did we do overcooked as well overcooked it was yeah. overcooked yeah, was absolutely. yeah so yeah so some of those just like re- you know not only is it memories of just playing with your best mate playing video games and just all that goodness but also then doing something positive with, yeah, with gaming and with what you know the the very limited and small reach that we have and the community that we managed to sort of garner together to to make money for for these charities just absolutely fantastic and it, and it really just goes to show as well that there's absolutely no fucking excuse for you not to if you're like mm-hmm. if you're ever, if you've ever just kind of sat there like i wish i could you probably can yeah absolutely like i mean i probably had what was it like probably like 100 followers on twitch or something at the time like I think we so. still managed and we still made actually i've got a feeling that we did it for my the re- the last one we did was actually 
for like 150 or 200 follows i think like that was that was actually the reason that we did it i think you're right yeah and we we also gave away a load of games didn't we as well i think as like rewards. yeah we did yeah, yeah. Fucking loads and loads yeah. of games yeah yeah we did um, yeah no, we should because do. I think I, I think for my for my hundred follower one, I did uh, a six hour dark uh, dark uh, uh, dark souls stream. Yeah, where every like I'd never played dark souls before, and every time I died, I donated a pound to charity. Yeah, you lost a lot of money that day. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought. It was it was it was forty six quid. Better than I think. Forty six quid that I donated, and yeah. then obviously like people don't. Yeah. I think it was probably. I think it was. Like, I think all in all, it was about one hundred and twenty quid. Nice. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. No, we should we should get to go and do those again. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll arrange one. Absolutely. So yeah, um, yeah. So that that's they're definitely up there for me. Um, you got any more? Um, I think I think like when um, like actually just mentioned Overcooked, and it is like it is one of my favourite things. It was like when um, when we came to visit you, like me and my significant other Pippa came to visit you and Amber. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. At your new place, and we played yeah. we played Divorce Simulator 2019. Was, <laughs> also, also known as Overcooked Two. Yeah, and awesome. it was like just us all just like yelling at each other about like random shit. Like you just if you if you just heard it without context, it was like what the fuck are you doing? Where are those? Tw-? It was like it was like being in Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> but we it's were like fucking on- raw. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like why did you cook this chicken nobody fucking ordered chicken <laughs> which is also very funny because because neither of us eat meat <laughs> like none <Yeah>. of us do <laughs> like, we're, all, we're all like vegetarian and vegan so <laughs> uh yeah so uh I, I think another one for for me is probably a little, little bit more selfish i suppose um and i think it's it's just those those memories of of those those first time experiences or, or playthroughs of games that, in the end, have become like my, in my top five list of favorite games or top ten, and uh, games that have just have, have meant a lot to me. Um, yeah, we already sort of briefly went into one with Oblivion, and I, you know, I, I, I I'd hazard a guess that's the most played game I have of the 360 generation. There are so many hundreds of hours put into Oblivion. Um, did you play oblivion more than skyrim absolutely yeah yeah because i because i i got oblivion not long after it was released right i think well it came out in 20, 2006 i got it in 2007 so and when did uh, skyrim came out in 2011 and i was basically playing it non almost non-stop from the day i got it oh my god <laughs> yeah uh like you know on and off on and off over those over the course of however many years that was um yeah um yeah so that game um fable 2 as well uh the thing that got me with fable 2 was that initial uh teaser trailer that dropped with the chicken or the, the bird and everything yeah the pigeon. Yeah. yeah um no it was a chicken wasn't it no no a chicken was for fable 3 i think this was a sparrow i think for fable 2 if i remember right oh that makes sense actually because yeah. you get that's your name isn't it you get called sparrow yeah don't you? yeah yeah so yeah so that game uh the first time of course that i played bioshock one my uh, god what an experience like of of, of all the games that i could go back and play you know forget and play again fresh that would be probably the first one that is yeah no like it's just that fucking it's that fucking reveal like yeah. that twist is just oh absolutely um so unbelievable yeah so yeah bioshock um I think red dead redemption the first one yeah that's another yeah uh, the last of us holy shit um, probably similar to so Bi- probably fucking... on the list with Bioshock actually as well of like if I could erase to be everything. fair like I don't think I ever want to go back and play Last of Us for the first time <laughs> that, that opening I've, I've played I've played uh, I've played The Last of Us more than once and, and yeah. it's and that opening sequence gets me every time yeah man I'm just like I'm, I'm just always in fucking floods of tears yeah, like yeah. so sad absolutely Um, and I think Lastly, but but by no means least, uh, this comes as no surprise to you. The Witcher Three, just that that game. <laughs> All right, Josh, I know you don't like it, you bastard. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, that, that, that game, that just game. Flogging a, just flogging a dead horse. <laughs> <really annoying. laughs> yeah. Every time, you know, I'm going to mention it. Every time. I mean, I know, I'm, I'm I know. wearing, it's, it's, wearing it's, a Witcher it's, Three it's, shirt as well. But it is, it is an in joke with us, though. Oh, absolutely. It, fair, absolutely. So, so I, can't, I can't not take the piss. No, absolutely. 
so yeah but like um, when you know but to be fair when you do have like those like seminal big rpgs oh, or yeah. whatever or, or like when you first come to like a world that you really love it's yeah it is like it is amazing hmm. it's like I, I um on a similar vein to you yeah. like like um I rem- the first the the first time i cleared um oh god what's it what was it called <laughs> The raid in uh in the Taken King. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Um, I, I can't. I, I no idea what it was the, called, but I I know what you're first, talking about. The first time I killed Oryx. Yeah. And, was just like, and he just like, you know, because because he's huge. Mm. So like you know you you do like the sisters, which is like the the penultimate boss fight. Yeah. It's in the same room, and then like so you kill the you kill the sisters, and then you're like oh shit where are we going from here, and then this fucking massive like giant dude comes up yeah oh man and like the hey, first everyone. the first time the first time i killed him like i was i was like i was absolutely ecstatic yeah that was definitely one of those like ah oh, moments where yeah you've just achieved something so, nah, so big. Yeah, I, it wasn't it wasn't even like i didn't even like sigh with relief i like yeah. fucking i was like I was like, yeah, take that, motherfucker, fuck yeah. Like, I mean, like, say, say what you want about Destiny, um, but those, those raids were good. I love, they I were, they were enjoyable, uh, especially that Taken oh. King one, because we, we did that quite a lot together. Um, yeah, I did enjoy like, that. Um, I mean, in fairness, the, the only time I ever enjoyed playing Destiny was with you, so every other I, time I, yeah, was... I, I remember that. I remember the, like, the first couple of times we took you through the ship jumping puzzle. Oh, my God, don't. Oh, <laughs> and my like, fucking and, God, don't. And, and as we know, white boys can't platform. <laughs> and Literally. like, Rob, Rob can't platform. No, nope. terrible at, at it. All. Absolutely terrible at it. Rob, Rob struggles to platform in Mario. Like, that's I where do, we're at. I do. I, do. <laughs> I genuinely do. So now um, my credentials are shit. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, bye-bye. Uh, next week, I'll be replaced by someone who's actually a gamer. Um, I'm just uh, I'm just pretending. I'm bringing, I'm bringing Lisa on. Yeah. Well, yeah, the dog, the dog has played more more Mario than me, so yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm I'm just about done. If you if you are, uh, yeah, no, I'm Josh, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm cool to I'm cool to shamelessly plug the living gas everlasting fuck out of myself. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. are you ready to wrap up? Absolutely. So yes. Um, so as uh, this at this stage of the the, the show, uh, we usually tend to wrap things up and uh, shamelessly self promote and plug ourselves so uh josh who you are you find... what do you do where can we find you on the internet i am singularity josh i am a very very bad streamer and i definitely need to get more into it i'd imagine that the podcast will probably uh kick my ass into actually getting into it a little bit more i should hope so. um you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash singularity josh you can find me on Twitter at, at Singularity Josh. You can find me on Instagram at, at Singularity Josh. And I don't really use the Facebook, but I do have a Facebook page if that's your jam. www.facebook.com forward slash Singularity Josh. Uh, we play lots of like first person shooters. We basically just play whatever the fuck I fancy. Um, Damn we, sure. also, we also do uh, some creative streams, some like painting and that kind of thing. Because like, I, I paint Warhammer um, like semi competitively um and um also i'm going to be running um a couple of tabletop rpgs run through roll 20 featuring mr rob the undead gamer amongst some of other friends who's that he sounds cool yeah he's all right um i don't know what his role playing's like though Terrible. Um, just like his stealth and platforming i hear yeah this yeah i was about to say like, oh fuck actually like i just remembered like so we're going to be playing urban shadows and you've rolled what is effectively the stealth character. You're welcome. <laughs> cool. That actually hadn't really occurred to me until just then. Nice. Um, so yeah, like just just keep your eyes out on Twitter and stuff for that. Like I'm sure Rob will Rob will also bump that about because he's involved. Um, yeah, but that that's me. Awesome, Roberto. Where are we finding you? So uh, obviously, if you're here, thank you. And uh, you obviously, I, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the under gamer, which you're here. You're here. That's awesome. If you're not, then come along. Check me out. See the games and stuff and things. Uh, you can also catch me on Twitter at the undead gamer 
on Facebook at the Undead Gamer, Instagram at the Undead Gamer. It's all at the Undead Gamer, but gamer without the e because I'm. I was about edgy to say like if you that. if you're if you're an audio if you're an audio only list uh, audio only person, mm. yeah, it's the Undead Gamer, all one word, but without the e in gamer. So uh, what you can expect to be coming up on the Twitch platform over the course of the next month. Uh, we are hopefully going to finish off Machine for Pigs Amnesia this weekend because we are super, super, super close. And I don't want it running in too far into November because it was our spoopy game for October. Uh, and after that, not quite sure what we'll be playing, mate. Probably Horizon Zero Dawn. We might also whack out a few smaller little games that we've got going on our PSN, but we'll see. But yes, I... I, I, I strongly think we're going to be diving into horizon zero dawn this month um so definitely Aloy come along. Spy, Aloy. absolutely so definitely come along and check that out if you can um uh yes uh as for the as for the podcast as for the podcast um you can catch us uh oh my word sorry guys just had a singularity just the first time you've uh type something on the chat so your your uh, sound effect went off um so yes yeah, so the uh, bad. that's okay so the obviously the, the under the gaming cast is our monthly podcast we talk about video game stuff and things uh the next episode we usually try and do it on the live show the last tuesday of every month obviously this didn't happen for the first episode because we were just we kind of balls it up time and then we had technical difficulties and we were just trying we had, to get we had it out. 90, we had literally no word of like 90 minutes of technical difficulties. Oh my, literally, yeah. And, and still, it didn't get fixed until the next day. So yes, you can expect the next Undead Gaming cast, the live podcast, to go out on twitch.tv slash the Undead Gamer on the 26th of November. It's the 26th of November at uh, 7 p.m. GMT. If of oh, course shit, you... I'm busy that day. Shit. Um... Oh, damn. What are we gonna do? Sorry, I'll bring Lucy on instead. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you miss the live show, but you would still like to watch the VOD, then you can probably catch it on Twitch. But you can also catch it on my YouTube.com/slash The Undead Gamer. Go catch the uh, the live VOD there. Uh, and also coming soon, uh, a bit later on in in the same week. Uh, we will be putting the podcast out on various podcasting audio platforms. Uh, we can confirm this at the next episode once we actually know what's happening uh, and where it's gone and on social medias between then, obviously. But we're hoping to put this on Apple uh, Podcast, Spotify and SoundCloud. So if you're if you can catch it on any of those, great. I mean, you might even be might even be listening to it on there now who knows who knows but yes so that's that's the plan anyway for the podcast but yes we'll be there on the 26th of november that'll be the next podcast and uh we'll see what our news topic is and we may even be asking for a little bit of audience participation and asking you some questions about how you feel about what we're talking about and uh get your comments on the show so yes uh so anyway sorry uh we sort of rambled on a little bit it's been a while since we've done this uh we will get better i promise and make things a little bit more concise and sweet. At least on my part, Josh has been wonderful. Um, <laughs> I haven't. Uh, so yes, but thank you very much for tuning in and watching and listening, or however you're consuming this podcast. We will catch you again on the 26th of November. Like I said, until then, guys, I've been Rob the Undead Gamer, and you have been... Singularity Josh. And we will catch you in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.